Have you experienced the awesome power of the Panasonic Real 3DO system? Obviously. Presenting 3DO, the most advanced home gaming system in the universe. It's time to put away your toys. 3DO from Panasonic Gold Star and Creative Labs. A new low price and free games. Mind graphics of Panasonic Real 3DO. 3DO. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 3DO Experience, the 3DO retrospective podcast where we talk about the 3DO console, the company behind it, and all the history in between. Uh, and it's been a couple months since the, since the last episode. Uh, apologies for that, but uh, life happens. People move. All sorts of crazy stuff like that. And yeah, but hopefully now we're going to be back with uh, more future episodes on a regular basis. And previously the show was a solo show, which was just myself. But for all future episodes, I'm actually going to be introducing a new co-host of the show. Uh, Thrak, introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. My name is Thrak. Most people call me Thrak. And I have decided to jump on the 3DO Experience podcast because I thought it would be a lot of fun. So here we are. I apologize if I sound a little too NPR-ish, but that's just the way it's going to go. So how are you doing, Bill? Ah, I'm doing great. Um, it's It's been a while since I've talked 3DO, so I'm a little little rusty at this, but hey, that's the point of this show is to reintroduce people to the 3DO. And yeah, it is a fascinating little console there. And so in previous episodes, we've t- I talked about the, the early history of the 3DO company itself, and then we also talked about the different hardware variations of the system. For this episode, my goal was we're going to actually talk a little bit about why exactly we're going to be, we want to do a podcast on the 3DO. I also want to talk about Thrax history with the 3DO and a little more of my own history. And I figure the best place to start is Thrax. How did you first hear about the 3DO? That is a great question. So back in, I want to say about 2007, I discovered this great thing called YouTube. Mm -hmm. And on YouTube, there was this guy that you may have heard of. In fact, I imagine most people here have heard of. He's a a very notable name. That is the Angry Video Game Nerd. Mm -hmm. And the first episode of his I ever watched was the Sega 32X. But it was around the, the time of discovering him and learning about the past, essentially, the the history of video gaming. He kind of turned me on to that. And then later on, people like Gaming Historian. And so through that, I learned a bit about, like I had heard the name 3DO. And I was like, oh, that's a, a very weird name. And I remember in my N64 collecting days, I had a couple of those Army Men games they published later on. And I remember when I saw that they said the 3DO company on there, I'm like, wait, aren't those the people who made that console? So, like, what's up with that? But I didn't really learn more about it until later on when AVGN made his infamous video about plumbers don't wear ties, which made me a little bit more curious to the system as a whole because he does kind of go in detail about the different models and talks about some of the games on there and, and of course, the one infamous game that he talked about. So, and then... So learning about how a lot of the FMV games had essentially their best versions at the time on the 3DO um, kind of caught my eye because I have a bit of a soft spot for the FMV stuff. Um, and then it wasn't until basically for this show, I uh, I went out and bought a 3DO. So I own one officially now. I had opportunities to buy them in the past. In fact, I remember a good 15 years ago, at this one video game store I used to go to, they had they had like Sega Saturns, Atari Jaguars, 3DOs. Um, they even had a Virtual Boy at one point. Like I've seen basically all of those consoles in person, mm-hmm. and they were all maybe like 60, 70 bucks at the time. But the retro gaming um, market, I guess, was a lot different then than it was now. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's uh, that's an understatement. Yeah, <laughs> sadly. I, yeah, I think you and me have seen it change over the course of real time, going from it being, you know, easy to get these games to now it being near impossible. Mm-hmm. So, with, with some you, exception, 
you just recently bought your 3DO. Do you mind saying how much you spent on it? Or oh yeah, yeah. I I see. Back in the day, I saw it for I think it was like sixty bucks. It was the FC10 model, mm-hmm. and now I paid one ninety for it, which is about what I expected to to pay for it because I went on eBay and kind of looked around and I saw kind of variants of like one fifty up to like two hundred. Um, some of them were like Japanese FC tens. I saw a couple FC ones where some people were like, this might work. I'm not sure. Like I never understood how somebody would un- not be able to test something when they have all the cables for it. They could just, you know, plug it in and see if it works. Yeah. It's kind of uh, hard to lose the power cable on the three DO. Yeah. The, I mean, the FC one anyways. Yeah. Unless, unless they don't have any TVs with, um, the AV hookups. Cause I know a lot of modern TVs don't have them anymore. It's all HDMI which that kind of blows my mind. But um, but nevertheless, I was able to get one. It's uh, it's in fairly good shape as well, which kind of surprised me. But it came with all the cords, no problem. I bought a couple games for it at the store, and then recently I've been eBaying a couple more games. Mm. So my library, once everything comes in, will be about 20 games. Nice. And which yeah, it's just a solid lineup. Most of the, the, the heavy hitter stuff and then a couple of like weird niche shit in there that uh, i would like so like like john always, madden football yeah see i always laugh because like weird niche is like the perfect definition for most of the 3ds library yeah yeah though there are some of the like the the bigger heavy hitter games yes. like you know like the like gex mm-hmm. and uh return fire and things like that ones that are are known for the 3do at least they're like attached to it so I have some of those, and then and I got some of the weird ones. Like I got um, Station Invasion, which I'm still not quite sure what that game is. But yeah, I found that recently point. as well. I've yet to play it. <laughs> yeah, the the when the the seller said, "Oh, it, it's like new," and then when I got it, there's like a big crack in the CD case. So I'm like, yeah. "It's not like new, buddy," but it's fine. Like all the the jewel cases are in fairly good shape. Tested all the discs; they work just fine. So no no issues so far. That's good. Though I, though I did have one issue with a 3DO game uh, last night, but I'll probably get into that later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, honestly, you, you kind of lucked out because the FC10, as much as I prefer the FC1 just in terms of look. Um, oh, yeah. It's a chonker. It is, but it's like such a high, it, it's such a solid, like chunky, chunky bastard, but like it also looks like a VCR. Like in a way, I compare it to the original Xbox. Because when the original Xbox came out, I don't know if you've ever seen one in person, but those oh, are like, one, yep. yeah, those are big honker boys, you know, like you could chuck that at somebody's head and it would probably do some damage. The 3DO, I imagine probably the same, but I get the sense that the 3DOs aren't as well built as the Xbox. Um, um, it's, and it's funny you say VCR because then the original Xbox One model, everyone called the VCR model because that's exactly what it looked like. Yeah. I had one for a while. So... It's kind of funny. Like you said, like one, you got your 3DO for like 190. Yeah. I got mine back in 2018, like back right when the market started going crazy. Um, so the, um, there's a, back in my hometown before I moved to uh, Connecticut, we had a local game store called Bowser's Basement and they would post on Facebook all their like uh, new uh, arrivals all the time. And, I was checking the Facebook one day and I just saw like a FC one, like brand new. Well, not brand new, but like this thing looked mint, just like sitting on his counter. And he just said, just arrived. And like, I literally like the second I saw that got in my car and just drove to the store. I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'm getting a 3 o today. So I show up and he had it there and I was kind of looking around. He had a couple 3 o games on the shelf, including like a long box boxed uh, Gex among other Ooh. things. And he had like, one controller, all the hookups necessary. And I think he also had like a copy. So the only long box he had was Gex, but he also had uh, Mist and the game Shockwave. Ooh, and I hate to get Mist. So I kind of like, I, kn- I know the owner, like he's a really nice guy. I kind of made a deal with him. I was kind of like, how can we like work out a deal? How much for just all your 3DO stuff? Because he only had like a handful of stuff. And we worked it out. He gave it to me for like 220 total. So. That's not bad. Honestly, like the co- console itself was probably worth around 200 at the time. So he basically just kind of gave me everything just to get it out of his store because no one was buying it. Like that copy of Gex had been sitting there for like two years, apparently. Yeah, because when I bought my 3DO, 
I actually called a bunch of the retro game stores that are around me. There's actually quite a few around me, like at least half a dozen. Um, I called five, and the first four, funnily enough, when I when they got to me, I was like, hey, do you have any 3DO consoles in stock? And a lot of them were like, um, let me check, because I guess I assume they're not used to getting that kind of question. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them were, and they were just like, nope, don't have any. And there was one that said they get them in sometimes, whatever that means. But um, the one I got it from, yep, they they had it, and then I went in, it was right in there. Um, had a good conversation with the guy about the 3DO. He even showed me some uh, Philips CDI stuff. <laughs> um, so that was cool to see that. But CDI is something that's gotten ridiculous in price, but that's yeah. another topic. And especially because the CDI literally only has like, four games worth playing on it and even then they're not good <laughs> yeah it, it's 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 the nintendo connection so like yeah. in a way the cdi almost has a nintendo tax on it when it comes to the price but because mm-hmm. i remember when those zelda cdi games weren't weren't as um expensive as they are now but you know do i regret buying that do i regret not buying that not at all yeah no the 3do is a bit more of a uh It's like this oddity that existed at one point. A lot of people know about it, but like no one really has any desire to own it, which is why it's kind of it's kind of in this weird little niche that like some of a a certain small group of us like kind of like live in. And it's kind of funny because like I'll go to the store and ask for 3DO stuff. And a lot of the times I'll either get like the they'll just give me like those just flat out no or I'll get the one person who's like 3D what? (laughs) <laughs> and then I have to explain to them what the 3DO is and give the whole like lesson on like, so it was this whole it, it, crazy idea by the ex-founder of EA who was trying to make a video game standard that failed miserably, but it has a, a lot of niche uh, things about it that are worth talking about. I mean, if you're working at a video game store and you don't, a retro video game store and you don't know anything about the 3DO, you know, I, I, I kind of... Not not to not to be too gatekeepy, but I, I I kind of question the the legitimacy of that retro store. So from what I find is a lot of the times it's not even the. Uh, so there's so many retro stores now, like it's oh god, it's like crazy just how many of them have popped up. A lot of the times the owners will know their stuff, but a lot of their employees are pretty much like GameStop employees that have just moved over there because it's a better working environment, but they really don't know much about gaming history. Yeah, yeah, like they know Nintendo very well. Um, In fact, I remember once I saw a tweet where it was talking about how gaming history is very, like, American-centric and Mm -hmm. Nintendo-centric, which I definitely think there's a truth to that. Um, Because, yeah, beyond, say, I would argue the big four, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sega, I I imagine most, you know, not to sound like an old man, but a lot of these kids don't really know their stuff beyond that. They might know Atari, you know, but Atari, they know just for the, the 2600, like even, they know the name, yeah. know, like Atari is a name. Whereas um, even, you know, even 3DO is nothing. Yeah. Even like Sega, you'll get kind of like a lot of like kids are like, they know Sonic, but they don't know. They don't know Sega made video game consoles. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they don't know shining force and that breaks my heart. Yeah. They don't know breaks shining force. Heart. They don't know anything really fantasy star barely <sighs> like, man, say panzer trig you know all those but some of that i think is also sega's fault for not keeping up with you know the current times of that stuff but that's another topic for another day if it ain't sonic or yakuza sega doesn't care Um, like a dragon it's like a dragon now yep yeah (laughs) i don't like that name change but that's that's a topic for another day well that was the i believe that's what it was called in japan the whole time was it i believe so Mm. so they're just standardizing the name across the uh the world i'm fine with it okay if it's like that then it's kind of like the the whole hot shots golf is now everybody's golf everywhere now yeah that's like i prefer the name hot shots golf but i get it yeah so anyway the 3do 3do uh so what, what was your first thoughts like turning the thing on because i remember when i turned the 3do on i was very shocked to realize the um the, f- the famous 3DO startup, like the Asteroid Field, doesn't actually pl- start if you have a game installed. It only it only does that if like it's in like there's no game installed and that's it's like screensaver. I found out when I first turned it on, my or yeah, my first thought was, oh please God, 
I hope this thing works. Yeah, same here. Because, <laughs> yeah, I've heard some stories over the years about, you know, them about like, and, and plus like old consoles in general, there's no guarantee that, you know, they're going to work. Even though when I bought it, the guy was like, oh, we've played around with it. It should be good to go. But he's like, you know, if it's an issue, come back. No problem. Um, See, when, when they say that, that's usually that like makes me feel better about it because I'm like, OK, I trust them. Yeah, yeah. When it's like. When when you go into a retro store, like a retro video game store, and you're talking to like a dude in his like 40s, you suspect he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. So, so it's like okay, I'm inclined to believe him. And then I turned it on; it worked. And my first, at first, I thought something was wrong because when I turned it on, there was no sound because it had like the startup screen. It went to the menu because the FC10 has like the bouncing bubble, like little menu. You know, I wasn't getting any sound. Oh yeah, and... fun, fun fact: the FC10 has a menu. The yes, FC1 does yes. not does it not yes. have a menu. Because I believe the FC10 is the only one with uh, onboard memory. Well, they all have onboard memory. This is the fun part. The FC10 is the only one that you can actually manage it <laughs> with the console. Yeah, and it had um, memory already preloaded on it when I got it. But being the chaotic man I am, I deleted deleted it without even looking at it. So, Because um, that's just what I do. In fact, a um, little off topic, when I got... Um, I think it was Pokemon Moon. I want to say it was Pokemon Moon in like a 3DS bundle. Mm-hmm. It came with like a save file. That was probably some kid's save file. It was like well over 100 hours. And I looked through it and this kid went bananas in Pokemon. Um, I looked at it for five minutes and then I deleted it. And and, and I got a little bit of joy out of that because <laughs> I, I have a love-hate relationship with Pokemon. So, But in any case, I deleted all the stuff from the 3DO memory um, but yeah, I was like, I was like, oh God, is there no sound? Cause I'm just used to when you turn on a console, if it has like a menu or a startup, like it has a startup jingle, like the PlayStation has it, the Saturn has it, um, you know, and basically everything since has it. And I know the 3DO was in that era with the Super Nintendo and Genesis, which didn't necessarily have them, but it was just concerning to me that there was no startup jingle. So to be safe, I took one of my many CDs off the shelf and popped it in and and turned it on, played it, and I got sound. So I was like, okay, we're we're good. Oh, we're you, good. Agreed it's just... to, you agreed it to the 3DO um, graphic equalizer, which is like one of the greatest graphic equalizers for a console ever made. I was not, actually. Oh, I was just give, I was just given like the track, just like, oh, this is track one, and it was just playing. It was all like the technical stuff. Oh, did they get rid of the graphic so, equalizer for the FC10? I don't know. I didn't mess with it too much. It was more just a tester to be sure it was working. Um, and thankfully it worked. I, I, I popped in, if anyone's curious, I popped in a rainbow and curved air by Terry Riley. You all should check it out. Some really cool shit. Um, and when I got those lovely looped organs coming out of the TV, I was like, okay, we're good. And so I started playing games on it and, and yeah, I've only had one issue with one game and it might've been a freak accident, but I was playing Jurassic Park interactive already my first, already my first mistake. But in the middle of it, the game just reset itself. I yeah. didn't touch it or anything. It just happened. And then I kept playing. After that, I just like, you know, reloaded everything and kept going and didn't have any issues since then. I've put a considerable amount of time in the games like Guardian War and John Madden Football, and I haven't had any issues hardware wise with that. So I can only imagine it was like a freak accident. Yeah, 3DOs are a little finicky like that. Like, the FC1 in particular, like, if the disc struggles to read, it actually will just eject the disc right away and, like, won't even, like, struggle with it anymore. Like, it, it'll oh, be really? Fun. Yeah, it's funny. When you're starting up a game, if the disc is really scratched and you try putting it in, like, I've had the worst luck trying to find a copy of Crash and Burn. Yeah. Like, I've bought three copies of it. I have one on order right now because um, all three of my copies just have not worked very well um but the 3do the fc1 is is interesting because like you'll put the disc in and you'll like hear it try to read it and then after a while it'll just give up and it'll just eject the disc so it doesn't wear out the eye the laser man that that is strange yeah it's a weird everything about the 3do is kind of weird but like that's kind of why i like it so much yeah because my copy of crash and burn Loaded in, and I played the first race, so I had new issues. So I have another one on order, so I'm hoping that it actually functions this time because Crash and Burn mm-hmm. is a fascinating game that we'll we'll get into more later because um, oh yeah, it's kind of important to the 3DO in I a mean, lot of ways. I mean, for like what the first two months of its life, it was the only game on the market. 
Yeah. <laughs> and that's they a wonder whole, why they wonder that's a why whole this issue. system failed. It's, but, I think it's more reasons than that, but that definitely doesn't help at oh, all. Oh, the, the 3DO was definitely mismanaged yeah. like in a lot of ways. Yeah. Funnily enough, the one game I had to buy multiple copies till I got one that worked was a uh, Super Mario Sunshine. But this was um I had this issue like I think it was like ten plus years ago. And that was back when you could get Sunshine for like fifteen bucks a pop. So thankfully I only had to buy it like twice because I bought it once didn't work um I think I bought it online so I didn't know what to do with it so I went to a store and they had it um tried it out didn't work gave it back to them they gave me a a new quote-unquote new copy and then that worked just fine thankfully so like every once in a while you just get that one game that doesn't work Mm -hmm. because in my experience I don't think CG, CDs or disc based media is as fragile as some people have tried to like make it out to be. Um, no, like, people are like, oh, if like a disc gets scratched, it's ruined. It's like I've I have bought discs that are just like just beat to hell. Pop it in, no problem. Like literally, no problem. So a lot of people have that misconception that if the if the actual like uh, read area is scratched, it's going to have issues. It's actually the data layer, which is the top part, like where like the graphics are, that is like the part that you really don't want to get damaged. Yeah, because I think with CDs, it's there's that plastic coating on top, mm-hmm. and then there's the metal under it that holds all the data. Yep. And if like scratches get to the metal, then you're basically screwed. Yeah. That's but if it's where... on, but if it's on the top, you can easily fix that. Because I think resurfacers they take what like a microscopic layer of the plastic off to try yeah. to like clean the scratches entirely, which can have its own. It's like um. It's like if you ever are like you know, refretting like a guitar or something where it's like the frets are so like worn that you try to like shave them off a little bit to get them back to where they, you know, used to be dressing frets is um, it's similar to that. Hmm. But after you can only do that for so many times until it's like completely gone. In fact, I think at least one of my 3DO games actually was resurfaced. Yeah, it's, but resurfacing is like definitely like a last resort kind of thing. Um Yeah. The thing about like a uh, 3DO discs I've noticed is like these these are definitely like the early era of CDs so like these things are a little flimsy in my opinion which is why I think I've had so many issues with them over time a little bit but I think that's just you know people just not taking care of them yeah which is just an issue that you come across with um disc based media cuz it's easy with cartridges to be kind of like shitty to them and they'll be just fine but yeah. with CDs there is a higher risk of failure even though I still don't think it's as bad as some people make it out to be, no. but I imagine with these games, like you know, they're reading everything off the disc. It's not like, say, like a modern Xbox or PS5 game where you just put the disc in and it just um, installs either some of it or at, at most like some of it onto the hard drive, and then the rest is on the hard drive, and you're good to go. Yes, you know. So the, the 3D it's a lot also different now. Has like a lot of like full motion video, as like we've mentioned, and yeah, I, I swear the 3DO struggles with that sometimes. Like, because a lot of my games will work perfectly, but like when you try to load one of the CGI cutscenes, it like chugs and like skips, and I'm like, I'm like, oh no, is this disc dying? And then like I'll skip the cutscene, and it works perfectly. So I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's because like the file sizes for FMV clips are usually like really large. And in order, and I think the CD has to spin at a faster rate, and the laser has to read a lot more data like quicker than normal. So you can't like preload that stuff, like say into RAM, because a lot of games, like you know, they when they're reading off the disc, they can preload the data into the RAM, so that say if like the debt, like say if the tray opens up, you can still play it a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. with FMV, because it's just such a a, a big like file size with a lot of information to cycle through, you know, if there are scratches or if there are some issues, say with like your laser or whatever, it won't, you know, it won't read as, as fast as it should. Mm-hmm. And that's what can cause slowdown. Yeah. Um, though I've had no issues with FMV yet because some of the games I have have a fair amount of FMV in them and they've given me no problems. Like I watched basically the whole intro to a club 3DO station invasion, which is a lot of FMV. I had no issues with it, so I may have lucked out. I mean, hell, they may have cleaned 3DO before I even bought it. They didn't say if they did or not, but yeah, it's you know, hit- it was a fairly cleaned uh, console when I got it, anyways. It, it's hit or miss for me. Like the when I try to play Gex, the like the CGI opening like is very like slow and skippy. Yeah. But if I'm playing Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, it runs fine. So I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's just you know pictures. 
Well, it does it's have just, that full motion. Image. It does have the full motion video intro part. Oh yeah, yeah. The one part, like I guess they could only afford like <laughs> what was it, like a minute of FMV, and then they just took pictures. I cannot wait for that definitive edition to come out because I am f- so curious to the behind the scenes, I like the defini- making of this game. That I need definitive to know. edition's gonna come out, and like you're gonna get all these reviewers. They're gonna be like, "This isn't a game; it's a fucking slideshow." And it's gonna be like, "Yeah, we've known this for years." So like. I don't I don't think they're going to treat it like that. I think the reviewers are probably going to treat it as like this is a a cute little historical piece for like people who are like like niche um like people who are into niche games like this. Like they'll they'll treat it like they would say treat like say maybe the Atari 50 collection where yeah. you treat it as like a period piece, as like a museum piece, something that is helping to I think, you know, preserve uh video game history. And for that it's probably doing a fantastic job. They'll probably be like, yeah, the game itself is trash, but it's something that if you if you're playing it, like if it's it's like the room. Like at this point, you're going in knowing what you're gonna get. And you wanna yeah. have and you want to enjoy it for what it is. I you mean, know what I, I mean? I paid two hundred dollars for a copy of it just because I wanted to physically own that. I Can't wanted to f- you. I wanted to physically own it and play it on an actual 3D because that is to me like the definitive experience. <laughs> I mean, you could always burn burn a copy. That's true. I I don't know. I'm I'm a weird, crazy collector. So, but I, to be fair, I've I've heard a lot of mixed results when it comes to burning games onto 3DO like these days. Yeah, the so 3DO's. I looked, so I looked I, into like, it. Yeah, the 3DO's laser is a little sensitive. I've noticed. Yeah, because I think it varies. Like people are saying, like, oh, it varies by like you know which model 3DO you have. Um, like, you know, the condition of the laser and people are like, oh, it like what brand of um like C D you buy, like C D R, um and like like what kind of um like what kind of C D burning software you're using, um, like how fast the data burns onto the like I've heard basically the entire process of burning a a C D R like burning a 3DO ROM on a CDR and then playing it on a 3DO, I've heard like every step be, you know, criticized and like looked at as like, oh, this could be like a fail point, like the entire (laughs) time. And a lot of it, I think, comes down to the FMV stuff. Mm -hmm. There was one video where this guy, I think it was Frame Raiders, where he was burning a bunch of 3DO games and he said most of the times he had issues, it was when... He was using this one specific CDR brand. I forget what it was. And you would get to like FMV stuff and the game would just chug or just crash. Mm -hmm. But when he was, say, playing Gex, like playing the game, no problems. He had no issues at all. Yeah, I've seen that like a lot of like with a lot of people. I think it just has a lot to do with the non-standard nature of 3DO and like how everything was kind of just a free for all. Yeah, it, it definitely feels like the 3DO is a... Like we're not quite sure how to make this work, so we're just gonna we're just gonna try, you know. The best but, way to describe 3DO, I've always thought, is like imagine of the video game equivalent to like VHS or uh, like DVD, yeah. Blu-ray, like where it's kind of like this one medium, and like anyone can make whatever for it. <laughs> yeah, and then the but the problem kind of became nobody wanted to make anything for it because, well, I think the 3DO had like a vision for what they wanted to do i just don't think they had enough expertise in the video game industry to really make it work because the video game industry is a bit of a different medium than say you know movies or television um like like comparative to say another disaster of the time probably more of a disaster the atari jaguar where if you think about the atari jaguar probably should have been more of a slam dunk because atari have that history that lineage they have experience in the hardware industry Mm -hmm. they you think they would know how to figure this out but i think they kind of were just horribly mismanaged to the point where like the jaguar was such a, a colossal failure and that atari is a shell of a shell of a shell of its former self basically Yeah, and keep in mind too the atari that made the jaguar was only was like one half of the original atari at best and then because the other half was making arcade games somewhere else yeah and then you have like the 3do which is like this new guy on the block with this sort of like kind of hot shot uh business guy at the top of it trying to be like hey this is going to be like the new thing this is the future and in some ways he was right but i think 
there is uh, problems that arise when you are too ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the biggest issue with the 3DO was that it was a little too ahead of the time, you yeah. know? Like, and, we'll get into it with, like, a future episode where we'll compare the 3DO to all of its competitors from the fifth generation because that this is the most fascinating generation of consoles because literally every single one of them is different. Yeah, and and another thing, I was thinking about this the other day, and I think another issue the 3do had was you know releasing in late 1993 in the in north america like you're releasing at the peak of the super nintendo sega genesis console war like that was the peak of it right yeah. and like everybody had one or the other some people had both and like 93 in going into 94 both these consoles are really popping off with a lot of like great games well established um uh, console fan bases you know kids arguing on the playground about blast processing and mario and shit and so you just have this new new guy trying to essentially force itself in in the middle of a generation and basically saying everything you're playing is bullshit here's like the real here's the good stuff right yeah and i think that like the timing of that i think was really bad yeah so you know 3, 3do is interesting because it is the technically it's I don't know if it's the official first console, but it's the, really the first one that people care about that kickstarted the fifth generation of video game consoles. Yeah. And it it actually, like a lot of people, we've mentioned in the past, but um, it was actually Time Magazine's product of the year, the year it was released. Like this thing had yep. so much hype behind it. And some of my favorites, like this was the era of like the video game slander commercial where like yes, every yes. every console was like trying to like, one up the other and like 3do had one of my favorite ads of all time the baby toys yeah that, which is actually the outro to this podcast which is my favorite thing <laughs> but um it's like uh it, you hear the little like z uh piano in the background it's like if you're not playing on a 3do what are you actually playing as it's throwing a genesis and sega cd into a toy box and they like break in half which is very disheartening to watch and then a super <laughs> nintendo on top of it and i'm like yeah, like I, that's very d disheartening, but very effective commercial for the time. Like you can tell they were influenced by Sega's marketing. Oh yeah, with um, because you know the infamous Genesis does what Nintendo don't campaign, which which wasn't wrong at the time because a lot of people. I mean, it's so good we still remember it. Oh yeah, and the funny you know? part is a lot of it's people, iconic. A lot of people make fun of Sega, thinking like it's comparing that that ad was directed at the super nintendo but in reality that ad was actually directed at the original nintendo yeah yeah again i think a lot of like nintendo centric revisionist history there um because i think also some people forget that for a while the genesis was outselling the super nintendo especially yeah. in america like three to one at one point i think so um, it, it's one of those things where they they do forget that they also i mean it's it's pretty clear the super nintendo would have won eventually but it did it eventually sold more well yeah it, I mean, Sega didn't help with the 32X. Like, I don't blame the Sega CD. I think that's a scapegoat. I think the Sega CD was perfectly viable at the time it came out. Yes. I mean, it still sold a couple million, so it wasn't a total failure. I think yeah. 30, the 32X is really what brought the Genesis down. Well, and also, I think, you know, going going to the Sega CD, I think some of the 3DO's marketing reminds me of the Sega CD, where it's trying to be like, you know, hey, you don't have this what's wrong with you? You should get this. And then they show like, you know, the, the, um, the sort of the, I forget what it's called where they just kind of have that hot rotating, like rotation of like, Oh, all the, here's all these games, you know? Yeah. And they show like crash and burn and Gex and all those games. And to me, like that baby toys ad, it almost, it's almost was, is something that Sega would have done for like the Sega CD, you know? But with that, like that Sega CD ad with the guy talking to the dude through the TV saying, Oh, you don't have a Sega CD. You waiting for a Nintendo to make one, which yeah. ironically they were working on one at the time, but yeah, I wonder what um, ever happened to that. <laughs> yeah. I wonder. Um, so the 3DO definitely was taking, I think influence from Sega trying to be sort of like the hip new kid on the block and trying to have like that sort of edgy marketing. But I think as opposed to Sega, 3do really didn't have the software to back it up like no. the genesis is one of the most beloved software libraries to this day you know i love that software library to death and not to you know start that war up again i like the genesis more than the super nintendo but that's a purely subjective opinion yeah. um not to deny the quality of the super nintendo but the 3do doesn't have that same level of quality though i think it has little bits 
of like it has its software library is very interesting. It is. There's a lot of stuff on there that's genuinely good, stuff that's genuinely bad, stuff that is completely bonkers weird, and then some <laughs> like kind of underrated stuff that has completely gone on under the radar and is stuck on there unless limited run games throws in the carbon engine. Yeah. So it is for all of its faults, when you look back on it from a historical perspective, it is quite a fascinating um, console to have a little journey with. It is. Which I, is essentially what this podcast is. That, that was, that, that's the main goal, mostly just because legit no one talks about the 3DO outside of like a few people in our little community we have going on. Yeah, and, like like I've seen other podcasts do 3DO episodes, and there's a bunch of 3DO episode like videos on YouTube of like Game Sack and all these other people doing stuff about it. But as far as something that's like this centric and like actually like deep diving into you know the company, the console, the games, everything, like as far as I know, we're like the only one around for this. We're the only active one, anyways. So yeah, and. It's kind of funny, like to jump back a little. We were mentioning the, uh, we had mentioned the um, the, the, three D O ads and stuff. It's actually kind of funny that Atari, going back to them, actually attempted to one up three D O in their slander ads with the famous "Do the Math" ad, which actually called three D O out. Oh during- yeah, the, yeah, because their console was sixty four bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember because they were like, "Oh, the Sega Genesis is 16 bit, the 32 bit, the 3 3DO is 32 bit, but the Atari Jaguar is 64 bit." Which is like, if you if if anyone's ever looked into the whole Jaguar 64 bit thing, it's, it's like it's all technicality. It's and also bits don't mean anything in reality. Yeah, but. I mean, it kind of. I think it refers to some something to do with processing power, but like the. Like the Jaguar is only considered sixty four bit because it has like thirty two like two thirty two bit CPUs in it, and it has like, two sixty four bit blitters. Yeah, which which would be cool, but like it was so infamously difficult to make games for that they also, if I remember correctly, they also threw in the uh, CPU the, that the I think Motorola sixty eight sixty yeah that the Sega Genesis ran on and and. And programmers are like, oh, we'll just make games with that because we know what that is. This like Tom and Jerry shit we don't know about. So, mm-hmm. and as far as I know, the homebrew scene has never figured out the Jaguar. So some have like there's a few homebrew games that like you look at and you go, wow, the Jaguar actually had some potential to it. Yeah, but you know, lazy sort of hardware making and lack of proper schematics. Again, that's a whole nother. The, J- the Jaguar is its own beast entirely. Mm. Um, it, it's weird because I think people know the Jaguar more than the 3DO, but the 3DO sold more, like considerably more. It did. The thing about the Jaguar is, though, the Jaguar looks more like a video game console, and it yeah, has and it the, has the name Atari. Plus, the Jaguar is just more fun to make fun of, which yeah. I find a little uh, unjustified because the Jaguar does have some really awesome things about it. It's got a handful of games that I've I've enjoyed over the years. Um and yeah, I remember seeing them for like sixty bucks and now they go for like four hundred dollars. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. Um so that that is a console I have no problems emulating the entire library for. It's also really easy to emulate, so Oh yeah, super easy. Uh but uh going back to now three DO, I have to ask, what was the first game you played out of all the ones you uh purchased? It- it pro- well, the first four games I got, for everybody to know, is I got John Madden Football, Jurassic Park Interactive, Killing Time, and Guardian War. They had a bunch more other games there, but those were like the four that stuck out to me. Um, and the first one I played was John Madden Football because I've, um, gro- growing up, I, you know, had a Sega Genesis in the house and with the essentially like normie. Uh, family that I lived with um, they were really into sports still are into sports so we had a bunch of the Madden games NFL or NHL games World Series baseball like sports games so sports games have always kind of been a part of me and I've always kind of treated them as a guilty pleasure for a long time but I'm starting to be like you know it's not a guilty pleasure some of these games are genuinely good and the Madden series especially in like the 90s period was actually really good and I know for some people it's hard to believe there was a time where Madden was good, but Madden was good at one point. And so... Well, there was a was, point where EA actually had to put effort into things. Yes, because they didn't own the NFL license outright, which is what killed the franchise. 
but um, but hearing there was a Madden game on the 3DL, I'm like, well, I got to get this, you know, and I even have the long box with it. it has like a nice big manual in it and it has like two posters as well. Like uh, one of them, I think, is here. I'm trying to pull it out. So, you know, give me a little a second. OK, yeah, there's one in here that's essentially all the stats for all the uh, the teams, basically. Mm. So if I were to look at it, find my team, the minnesota vikings if i were to find them it would say like oh here's like the quarterback and here's like their pass range pass accuracy speed that kind of stuff has it for all the teams at the time which is which is a fun thing to have oh, so this was like so this was like 93 yeah I'm, I'm 93 a, 94 i'm a new englander so the patriots must be a fucking joke <laughs> oh god yes and then the other poster is the uh basically on both both sides it's like oh here's all of the uh, offensive formations and then all the various plays you can do so you can have like a, a sheet so you know what you're looking at which is nice. which is kind of cute it helps if for like audibles and stuff um but it's like yeah a really nice package the manual is a nice uh thick manual with mm. a lot of detail in it um, oh actually that's something we should bring up the uh, the wonderful world of 3do like complete 3do collecting it is a mess oh god yes like like the like for John Madden football, I have the long box, the infamous 3DO long boxes that are ridiculously tall, which I believe was to prevent piracy or not piracy, prevent people from stealing it because you can very easily fit a three to four inch CD jewel case down your pants and sneak out with it. But the long box, which is at least twice as tall as that, you know, it's harder to, to you know shove shove a copy of John Madden football down your pants without somebody being like, hey, what are you doing? So, yeah. <laughs> so I think that was part of it. And also I could only imagine back in 93, 94, seeing these on like a shelf, you know, these big, tall things. You're like, Ooh, what's that? Cause it, it does kind of attract, um, the eye, but it, it is they very, do look, they do look fucking cool. I'm not yeah. But lie. it's very hard to find long boxes these days. And a lot of them are varied. Like if I remember some of them are just similar to like say NES style boxes where mm -hmm. it's just, you open the flap on the top and you pull the game out. So and EA, the idea is you're meant to throw them away. EA games were super extra and had those like DVD style clamshell cases with the little like yep. latches on the side. Yeah, yeah, it has like the cardboard lining on it, and then mm -hmm. yeah, the little plastic click that you pop open. But they're really nice. Like I, I like these. And surprisingly, for a copy this old, the cardboard like I think it's like glued in on the sides. It's starting to go a little bit, but it's not. It's not terrible. Like I paid, I think it was twenty five bucks for this complete, and it's not in terrible shape like it could be in better shape but when you're buying stuff this old it's something you just kind of have to expect like it's one thing if you're trying to get like jewel case copies of games those will those will last jewel cases can last pretty well but the long boxes often vary but um this madden one is surprisingly still in good shape the other long box i have is jurassic park interactive which is a completely different beast when it comes to the long box thing that they do mm-hmm so like mine came in a a outer sort of like plastic protective uh, sleeve, which I think somebody put in later as sort of like an aftermarket thing. You know, you pop it open and it has the different the different style of like it, it does open up, though. Like it has the little like thumbprint on the side that you peel it open and it has like the cardboard, but it's like it's it's more like folded over and it looks like more deluxe. Did, they have like um... the small CD manual on the bottom. Did and then Universal the disc itself is on the that? top. I believe so. The Universal Interactive Studios. So Universal had their own unique boxes because I actually have, um, I have a copy of Way of the Warrior, uh, the, the Naughty Dog uh, oh. Fighter, and it, oh, it, yeah. it it has the same style of box. It's like it opens up, but it's like all cardboard, and it it's better than those just straight up like NES style card, cardboard boxes with the jewel cases in them. Yeah, like these are these are really nice. Like they. They definitely were built more to last, you mm -hmm. know, because I think around this time, um, video game companies were starting to see the value in like, you know, packaging these games and having them in um, nice cases that people would keep as opposed to just like, oh, here's like a, a, a cardboard box that we keep a cartridge in. You just chuck the cartridge out. I mean, Nintendo did that forever. But, you know, you had Sega thinking ahead with their plastic game cases, which were fantastic. But, you know, when you hit CDs, it's like, oh, we can't just I mean, you could keep all the CDs on a spindle, but that makes me cringe. So we have to do something else with that, you know? Yeah. 
So it, it's funny because the majority of uh, 3DO games have those god awful just cardboard boxes which fall apart so easily. Yeah. And then they just have a jewel case inside. So a lot of those boxes, you know, were thrown away and they just kept the jewel case. Yeah. And and that's why like box copies are such a premium, you know, because mm-hmm. I also kind of collect Game Boy Advance games and finding those games in box can also be a real a real puzzle. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of them I've I mean, I, there's some GBA games that I've bought in box that were like dirt cheap, but those were just like, you know, like random like Shamu kind of games. <laughs> But if you wanted, say, like Castlevania: Aria of Sorrow, complete in box, you know, pre- prepare to fork out some money for that. Oh, you're, you know? you're gonna hate me. I got that for five dollars. <laughs> I assume this was back in the day. No, no, this was like two years ago. I bought it on Amazon, and it just showed up, and I was like, okay. It was just in Amazon's warehouse. No, it was from some seller. They must not have known what they had. Yeah, I guess not. Because I do, they I do have a cartridge version of that. I don't like to disclose what I paid for it, but you know whatever so i didn't spe- they didn't specify it was complete or not it was just it said aria of sorrow and i pit, i bought it and it showed up and it was complete and i was like huh i'm like all right i'm not gonna i'm not gonna question this at all and i'm just gonna accept it yeah sometimes we get lucky so yeah i saw the value of that though and i was like holy shit like yeah when did that but- happen yeah but i've been lucky enough to get a couple log box games i have a couple more coming in the mail um, some of them look like they're, they've, you know, held up. So I think with the, the long cardboard boxes, like if you take care of them, they'll probably be just fine, but you can never really be too sure how well people keep these, you know, over 20 plus years, you know, oh, yeah. like, uh, my copy of killing time. Like I had to like, I had to get like plastic inserts to like restructure it. Cause like. Whoever the previous owner was clearly like ran it over with something at one point. <laughs> yeah, my copy of Killing Time it's it's actually in a, a DVD style case. Um, the guy said that uh, um, he reprinted like some of them. I guess when they were they would come in with just the disc, he would um, like just take some spare DVD cases and then print off some uh, like um, aftermarket like cover art for it and just threw it on there. So my copy of Killing Time is in a traditional DVD style case. No manual or anything, but it, it's, it's cute to have. Yeah. I, ha- I have a copy of the 3DO sampler in one of those. Nice. What's in that sampler? I haven't played it yet, so I'll have to find out. Okay. Yeah. You got to report back. I will at some point. I got I to gotta play more 3DO. I, I played a good amount yesterday, and then I got tired and fell asleep. <laughs> Yeah, I've been I've been I've been dipping my toes a little bit more in it recently, especially when I don't have too much else to play at the moment, at least yeah. until September. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to like go too far into like the games because I want to save that for later episodes. But like, it, it's pretty funny like looking at some of these games, like especially the ones that like would later go to other consoles because like the 3DO is actually like the, the debuting like console for a lot of franchises people wouldn't expect. Like, yeah, uh, Need for Speed is probably the most well-known one. Yeah, Need for Speed debuted on here. Um, well, I think it's become more notable now, but Gex debuted on here. Mm-hmm. I know we've mentioned Gex a lot, but, you know, it was going to come up. It's kind of the thing um, the system's mostly known for these days. Yeah. I mean, there's also the the really cool game Return Fire um, that first appeared on here. But also you have, um, like, ports of other, like, uh, like ports of already existing games on to 3DO, some of which have like been considered like the best versions of like say Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo mm-hmm. which was considered like the best console version at the time with the worst controller ever to use to play yeah, it, but that's why they made like a specific controller for it which somehow um, looks worse i'm told it's not bad but those are a bit pricey so i I've, yeah. I've i've yet to hunt one down but also um i got a Wolfenstein 3D which people said is a great version oh, yeah, of that's the funniest thing Wolfenstein 3D amazing port Doom. It is a great port. <laughs> Not a amazing port. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame how that worked, but yeah, I played a bit of the Wolfenstein 3D port. It is, it is pretty fantastic. It, it's really good. You want to know what's even um, more wild? Is that the programmer who did a uh, Wolfenstein also did Doom, and they came out like polar opposites. But there is reasoning for what happened with Doom, and I want to save that for the actual episode because it is a wild story. Yeah, Wolfenstein 3D had effort put into it. Whereas Doom did not. Well, Wolfenstein 3D was handled by a competent company. 
Yes. Uh, Doom, yes. not so much. As I said, more on that later. Oh, yeah. So, but yeah, like the 3DO, you, you dive through the library, and then there's some games that people go like, oh, there's versions of it on here, like um, like a Night Trap. Mm-hmm. Like, you associate Night Trap with the Sega CD, right? But it has a 3DO port. I don't have it yet. I'm, I've been considering going to hunt it down. But um, yeah, there's games like Night Trap, Corpse Killer, um, that have 3DO versions that a lot of people say are like, you know, the better versions of. Um, yeah, there's a version of Road Rash on the 3DO, which is, I think most people consider that the best version of Road Rash. It's one of them. I personally think it's the best version just because it's so unique to the 3DO. Yeah, like I've, I've heard like, I've even heard some people refer to the 3DO as a road rash machine that like, I guess some, I forget which video it was, but they said like growing up, they knew a couple people had 3DOs and they, and they said all they would play is road rash on it. it like they barely played version. anything else on it. <laughs> it's so. a very good version of the game. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do like a, uh, oh, probably an hour and a half gushing about that in the future, oh, but yeah. you know, I don't have it yet. Yeah. I don't have it, a long it's box coming. yet. I need it's to coming. It. I did get a long box version, but. You know, we'll see what kind of condition it is and when I get it. Also, one of the only console ports of Alone in the Dark, which is pretty fun. Yes, Alone in the Dark 1 and 2. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, there's also a Pebble Beach Golf Links. There's, a lot, of, lot, there's a lot of golf of games. I lo- hey, I, lo- I love me some golf games. To me, that's like the best sport to, to make into a video game. In fact, I was talking to somebody at work today about that where... Um, like golf is a fun sport, but playing it in real life, there is so much like shit you have to deal with, uh-huh. you know, like with trying to find the damn ball and the weather and everything. Right. Whereas golf, like it video gameizes golf perfectly because it's, you just go to the tee, you hit the ball and then you're like, okay. And then, you know, you're just straight to it. You know, it video game eyes is the whole thing. It's like, it's why I say something like power wash simulator works so well because, it's it is it's a task you wouldn't want to do in real life no matter what they paid you but when they make it into a video game it just it makes so much sense and i think golf is comparable in that sense as well oh yeah no totally uh, it, i see i joke about the golf because like uh th- this is going a bit more into just my life but uh i actually work for callaway golf so i have like a little mini hatred for golf because of that that's fair enough like because I, I i see the process and i'm like i hate everything about this <laughs> but um <laughs> Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I could see, I could see that it it's yeah. When you, when you get into an industry like that, it makes sense. Yeah. I, yeah, I joke though, because like the golf games on 3d were actually pretty fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love me some golf games. So I, I we'll, own we'll deep th- dive into those. I own three of them just because I buy them. I buy golf games. now as a joke, like a little inside joke, but, um, I well, have, what's good is they're cheap. They, they are. They, they do not go up in value like at all, unless it's like, I mean, I imagine, say, like Mario Golf, like on the Game Boy Color, has gone up in price because everyone gushes about how great that game is. Well, I mean, it's an RPG. They are right. <laughs> it's an RPG. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also just a fantastic golf game that is true. in and of itself. So, but what's good about, yeah, like golf games is that, yeah, they don't retain value. So if you try to hunt them down, you can you can find them for a good price. Oh, yeah. Like there's Pebble um, Beach Golf Links, there's PGA Tour 96 or 95, one of those. Yeah. Wicked 18. Wicked 18. I found, I have that long box. Like, cause they, yeah. the, one of the stores I go to just had it. And I was like, hell, I'll buy a long box yeah. of that. Why not? I almost bought a long box of Pebble Beach. It would have been like 25 bucks, but I found it was just the jewel case and it was like less than $8. Mm. So I was like, I'll just save myself some money and just get that. Yeah, there's certain long box games where I'm kind of like, I don't need to own them long box, mostly just because they're absurdly expensive. Yeah, like one, I went out of my way to get the long box just because it looks so cool. I don't have it in the mail yet is um the port of Theme Park on the 3DO because mm. I also quite like Roller Coaster Tycoon. So learning about Theme Park, I was like, oh, this looks really cool. And I've tried playing it before and I was just kind of like iffy on it. But um. But with the 3DO version, I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll give it more of a fair crack of the whip. And also that that long box cover art, it looks really cool. Oh, yeah. You know, um, so, you know, we can probably also talk about that in the future because that'll be an interesting episode. Yeah. The one 3DO game other than Gex that I had to have the long box of was uh, Way of the Warrior just because I, I wanted to complete my Naughty Dog collection. So I needed to get that one in box. Yeah, fair enough. 
Yeah, it's it's a shame how like some of these um, long boxes are are just so hard to find. Like oh, I knew yeah. for Madden, I went out of my way to get the long box for that one because it's Madden. Thankfully, the but, EA games are all like produced to hell, so like you can find them everywhere. Yes, yes, which, which which helps. And also, when you have a little bit of a soft spot for sports games, and sports games almost never go up in value mm-hmm. unless it's like NCAA games for some reason. Um, you know, you're able to get them for a a, pr- a pretty good price. Oh yeah. But yeah, outside outside of that, some of them are just ridiculous. Like I've seen like long boxes of Gex that are ridiculous prices. I saw like I think it was Return Fire. If I like somebody was selling a long box of that, like sealed for like a hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. And that seemed quite a bit when I could get just the um the jewel case for like thirty bucks, which is what I did. See, I got I'm, I I might try to hunt down the uh the version of Family Feud for three DO on a Mm-hmm. Um, in, in long box form, because again, I, I also have a soft spot for game show games. Oh, speaking so, of game show games, you know, uh, Twisted the Game Show is like one of the greatest game show party games ever. It's on the way. I have it on the way. Um, so I, I just want to talk now about some of the really like what the fuck games that are on the 3DO because the 3DO has some like truly what the hell is this kind of games. Uh, you ever oh, heard yeah. of you ever heard of Patonk? Uh, yes, I've heard of it. I haven't played it, though. It, it, for people who don't know, Patonk is literally, it's pinball, but you play as the ball. Oh, yeah, it has, like, that horrible third-person, like, view to it. Yep, it is Yeah, it is a steaming pile of trash, but it's so hilarious, because you're, the entire game is just dumb, because you're literally, you're. it's all a game of chance. You're playing as a pinball, and, like, all you do is slightly move the direction you're going and then you can like launch forward slightly it's it's also extremely 90s like there's just like people the first level is literally called like the tunnel of love and there's just like people making out in the background the entire time it's like this is this is an experience yeah because i i like pinball video games but just the idea of playing it from the perspective of the ball i feel like i would either get motion sickness it's, or I would just hate the whole thing and turn it off. It's one of those things that's like, this sounds stupid, but I, I bought it just because I'm like, it sounds stupid, but I want to play it. Yeah, and I imagine it wasn't too badly priced. No, I got it for like $5. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just the jewel case, so it wasn't like a huge deal. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. On, honestly, like, other than that, like, I think the only other, like, real what the hell game in my collection is something like PO'd. Yeah, yeah, I I have that on the way as well because that's a game I definitely want to check out because there because there's a a good amount of like weird um like first person shooters on here because mm-hmm. there's also I think it's what Escape to Monster Manor which which kind of looks cool it's like a Wolfenstein clone but you're like shocking like like Frankenstein monsters yeah in, like, to, a, I'm a on the hunt house. for that right now like I just haven't been able to find it for cheap yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen it for decent prices, but I just haven't taken the plunge yet. Yeah. See, so, so yeah, I just bought a house, so I have to be careful with my money. But uh, I mean, that's fair. Yeah, but unfortunately, 3DO, unlike five years ago, isn't like the easiest thing to collect for anymore. Yeah, like I can only imagine. I haven't like gone out of my way to go into stores to find 3DO games, but I imagine it's pretty difficult to find um it's sli- it, it, it's pretty it, slim pickings whenever you find them yeah where it's like your best bet is ebay and then the issue with ebay is that when people sell stuff on there they know what they have so it becomes you know a game of almost like cat and mouse trying to get good prices on things mm-hmm. and i've been able to haggle some like you know good prices of stuff here and there but i know that's not always going to be the case you see, know whenever I so try some to... of these games i might end up like burning just to see just to see what i can get out of it you know or like emulating at the very least oh yeah yeah i i have 3 do emulation set up on my series x um it runs pretty it runs pretty well but that's only for certain games that are just like if i can't get it for official hardware because it's just completely out of my price range then i will result to that but. Some, something something lucian's quest something <laughs> like i i'm Plumbers tempted don't wear ties I'm tempted to get the Saturn version just to have a physical version so I don't feel bad for emulating, but... Yeah, I don't have the Saturn version anymore, so... Yeah. Or at least I don't have a Saturn anymore. I like collect. I tried collecting for that 15 years ago, and that was a pain in the ass. Uh, so. Yeah, Saturn's... I, I've dabbled in Saturn collecting, and 
it's not for it's not a beginner's uh collecting thing i'd say <laughs> no it oh it sucks i hate it yep i fucking hate it because when i got the 3do i saw um it was shining force 3 they had it complete in box it was a really nice condition copy and they wanted 315 dollars for it mm-hmm. and it oh god it broke my heart because i love that game like i love shining the whole shining series in general but uh sad because yeah. it's like i'm i'm not dropping that kind of money on one game you're out of your mind yeah i, I own panzer dragon and saga so it's like i i already have the holy grail off the wall but like it's still ridiculous they, they need to remake that game they really do or, or at least port it so porting it's apparently impossible because they lost the source code for it but you could figure it out i'm sure they could but it's like do they really want to that's the, the bigger thing I mean, you could give it to M2, and M2 could, you know, do the whole reverse engineering of ROM or set, you know, and then set up an emulator to figure it out. Like, they're whizzes over there. If anybody could do it, it's M2. They could. Unfortunately, Sega just doesn't care for whatever reason. Yeah, that's that's a whole other topic. But, yeah, so we're hitting about an hour now. I, I really just wanted this first episode to be kind of just a reintroduction to the show, introduce, like, Thrak and the kind of, like, Rest- kind of restart the show and get some of the interest out there again because in the future we're going to actually be talking more game specific episodes we'll have different episodes on different topics and we're going to try and make this a weekly thing and keep yeah it, keep it going this time it's not going to disappear for five months again yeah it'll definitely be fun to have like like game centric episodes like how many people are going to do like like uh, a complete like hour and a half podcast about you know guardian war on the 3do or like icebreaker you know or like po'd or something yeah or po'd yeah it'll, it'll be fun to like really like deep dive into these games well yeah because i want to talk about their backstory like the doom episode is going to be going to be a long one just because there's so yeah. much to unpack there yeah like i'm probably not going to hunt down doom on the 3do because no it's not worth, lot- the only reason to ever even like i'd emulate it just to experience how weird it is control wise yeah, um, but it's like because it's if you want to play the original Doom, it is like it's on everything. Yeah. So the only you do, reason you don't you only play the 3DO version for that at, rock and soundtrack. <laughs> That's really about it. Yeah, or if you want to know like how how bad did they mess this up, and then you play it and you're like, oh my god, they messed this up. You, bad. you play it and you go, this is the worst port of Doom ever, and then you play the Saturn version, and you go, okay, it's not the worst port, but it's definitely up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like uh, that's a whole other thing. Anyway. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. So um, I think this is going to be like a Wednesday show. So I'll this will be out, <laughs> I guess, the Wednesday after we record. And yeah, did you want to shout anything out before we uh, sign off or? Um, I mean, nothing really. You can always uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a bunch of discords as Thrak. You could tweet me at Thrak94. Um, I, I, I do have some planned appearances on some other shows. I'm a bit of a frequent guest on a novel console. And if you don't listen to a novel console, you should. It's a great show. Shout out um, to Chris. Yeah, shout out to Chris and Carradine. Yep. Um I, I I do have some some planned appearances on Tales of the Backlog and Pixel Project Radio, so you should definitely check those out as well. Shout out to Rick and Dave. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, um I guess you can uh tune in to me here every week talking about random games from the mid 90s that may or may not be good and a random console that that people don't know about (laughs) yeah and 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 people will learn about my weird eccentric sort of uh uh, game taste because i'll I'll probably if if we ever do an episode purely on madden uh, i don't don't know how we can get an hour out of that but maybe ea sports games because we can also talk about fifa yeah, yeah. In fact, I probably should hunt down that FIFA game, even though I'm not a big soccer guy. Yeah, I'm but, not either, but... Um, but yeah, you'll you'll learn that I have like a weird soft spot for like sports games, FMV games, game show games, even stuff like pinball. You know, a lot of those just kind of like almost kind of fringe sort of genres that don't get the the love that they get that say like RPGs get. You know, but I I do like the RPGs. No, no, don't get started now. <laughs> so. There's only a handful of them on 3DO, and they're all expensive. But uh, the one I have wasn't pricey. It wasn't. Bad. Oh, Guard- yeah, oh, for- yeah, Guardian. Yeah, Guardian Wars yes. okay. Lucian's yeah, I- quest though, not so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Guardian War wasn't too bad. The price wise, in fact, I've put at least an hour into it, so I can I can at least say at this point it's very good. 
I quite like it, but it appeals to my sort of like it appeals to sort of my like shining force brain because it is very shining force in that way. But that's for another day. Yes. Um, and on that note, guys, uh, you can also find me over on the Gaming and Collecting Podcast. That is the sister show to the 3DO experience where me and my sister Alex talked about a whole bunch of random bullshit and games from our childhood. Uh, Thrak was actually on a couple of recent episodes talking about Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, one of which should be out in a a couple weeks from now. So look forward to that. We go for three hours talking about 3D Sonic. It gets nuts. I mean, to be fair, there's a lot to talk about and we probably didn't even cover everything. No, <laughs> we hit three hours and it was kind of like, oh no, it's still going. <laughs> but yeah, that's, th- that's 3D Sonic for you, man. Yep. But on that note, guys, uh, this has been the 3DO Experience. We are part of the GNC Podcast Network and you can follow us on all the social medias. Uh, and you can join the GNC Podcast Network Discord where we talk 3DO, we talk uh, gaming collecting, and Alex posts a whole bunch of cursed shit. So <laughs> until next time, guys, we will see you all later. Bye bye. If you're not playing on a 3DO system, what are you playing with?